Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Ranked and Yu-Gi-Oh's Legacy of the Worthless. If you aren't familiar yet, in this series we're looking at the most infuriatingly unplayable archetypes ever shot out by Konami's executive asshole, what exactly makes those archetypes so horrible, and what needs to be improved in order for them to be less awful. The grading scale we use involves consistency, power, comeback ability, protection and versatility, and an archetype is considered terrible if it doesn't particularly excel in any of these categories. With that said, let's begin this episode's topic. The great English poet William Shakespeare once said, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. Whether you agree and feel we all shape the world around us by the way we see fit, or if you disagree and stand by the theory of strict universal determinism, there is one thing we can all agree on. Coin flips are bullshit and so is Arcana Force. As the name implies, this is a series of cards based on the major arcanas of the Tarot, and were used by one of my favorite characters in the GX anime, Sayo, or Sertorius if you happen to be more familiar with the dub. The thing about Arcana Force is that all their effects are entirely luck-based, and while it did work for Sayo, who had the power of controlling destiny itself, most of us mere mortals succumb to the cruel reality of heads vs tails, which is how the effects of the Arcana Force monsters work. So, as the usual starting point, let's take a look at the monsters. Ironically enough, we're starting off with what's probably the best of their cards, Arcana Force Zero the Dumbass. I mean, the fool. So yeah, it's actually pretty good even if you don't get the coin toss right. It cannot be destroyed by battle, but it cannot be switched to defense position except by a card effect. This doesn't really matter because in most cases you'll simply want to set this guy and save yourself the trouble of getting damaged. However, if you do summon it, flip a coin and apply one of the effects. Heads, negate and destroy your cards that target this card, and Tails, negate and destroy your opponent's card that target this card. Needless to say, a level 1 battle indestructible monster with the potential to resist targeting is nothing I'd consider bad, even with the defense position limitation and the equal potential of resisting targeting from its owner. So, with a decent start like this one, you'd expect him to improve upon each following Arcana, right? Well, here's Arcana Force 1, the Magician. It has 1100 attack and when it's summoned, toss a coin. If it's heads, his attack becomes 2200 until the end phase when a spell card is activated, and if tails, your opponent gains 500 life points whenever a spell is activated. This card is a nice example of the Arcana Force's trend of high-risk, low-reward coin toss effects. If you get it right, you get an average beater for one turn, but if you fuck it up, you might have just healed the opponent for 500 to 1500 LP. Hope you're proud of yourself! Anyway, the Magician is pretty shit and you shouldn't run it. The end. So that was Arcana Force 1, and we all know what comes after 1, right? Of course, Arcana Force... 3? Okay, um, give me a second here, let me just take the Hydraulic Phase Shift Emulator and attach it to the Transdimensional Photon Particle Accelerator Emitter to figure this out, and... Oh yeah, um, Konami, where the hell is Arcana Force 2, the High Priestess? I know I may be getting off track or nitpicking, but I do feel it's very important to note the fact that Arcana Force doesn't actually include all 22 cards of the Major Arcana, no, only the ones Konami felt like making. And while there are going to be some of them that are exclusive to the anime, High Priestess is one of the ones that weren't present in the archetype in any shape or form. Makes me wonder why they bother making these cards based on Tarot in the first place if they're just gonna flat out skip like half of it. Anyway, back to Arcana Force 3, the Empress. When summoned, flip a coin. If heads, whenever the opponent normal summons or sets a monster, you can special summon one Arcana Force monster from your hand, and tails, whenever they summon or set a monster, send a card from your hand to the graveyard. Again, huge risk of going into a massive disadvantage, but the potential benefit of being able to special summon one of the high level Arcana Force monsters during your opponent's turn somewhat warrants running around two Empresses, so I guess we might as well give it the medal of it's better than Magician. Next up is Arcana Force 4, the Emperor. You know, since all Arcana Force monsters get their effects by flipping a coin upon the summon, I'm no longer gonna state it happens when they're summoned, I'm just gonna save both yours and my time by immediately reading the coin effects. So, Emperor, Heads, all Arcana Force monsters gain 500 attack, Tails, all of them lose 500 attack. Well, if you really feel like playing that Arcana Force beat down, now you have the chance! Seriously though, most Arcana Force monsters have pretty pathetic stats for their levels and I feel the Emperor's boost should be an inherent thing to most of them, as in, the lower level ones should have at least 500 more attack in the first place. But hey, who cares about practicality when you can have gimmicks? Feel the Emperor was a bit too strong at his massive 1400 attack? Now he can have 900! And they say Konami doesn't care about balance. Anyway, if this was 2006 or something and you were playing casually at a 4-person locals, I'd advise running the Emperor, but unless you have an efficient way of bringing out 3 of them consistently, 
there's really no point in risking it. Skipping the Hierophant card, which was a thing in the anime, we head to Arcana Force 6, the Lovers. If heads, it can be treated as two tributes for tribute summoning an Arcana Force monster, and if tails, you cannot tribute summon Arcana Force monsters at all. In total, as we'll see later, there are two Arcana Force monsters that require two tributes, of which only one is even remotely worth it, and even with that, there are so many better ways of going about summoning it, instead of hoping for this to land on heads, waiting a turn and normal summoning the thing. I'm sorry, lovers, but this relationship is not going to work. Now that we are the lucky number 7, you'd expect some occasional improvement, but too bad, here's Arcana Force 7, the Chariot. If heads, when it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon that monster to your side of the field, but if tails, the opponent gains control of the Chariot. Control exchange can be one of the most devastating plays you can make to disrupt the opponent's strategy, since you're most likely stealing a valuable resource of their deck and preventing them from using it until they gain control of it again, mostly by destroying it. However, the risk highly outweighs the reward in this case. In the better outcome, that being heads, 1700 attack is nothing that'll make the opponent tremble in fear of their powerful monsters getting stolen and used against them, and in the worst possible situation, Tails will leave you without a monster you just happened to summon, therefore making you completely waste a resource. I have a feeling this chariot might need a few sets of training wheels if you catch my drift, <laughs> Uh, no, no. Oh boy, time for a skip fest. Alright, Arcana 8, the strength, is an anime-only card. Arcana 9, the hermit, isn't present anywhere. Arcana 10, the wheel of fortune, is a trap card we'll be looking at later. Arcana 11, justice, is not a thing anywhere. Arcana 12, the hanged man, is another anime-only card. And Arcana 13, death, is another trap card we'll check out later down the line, as is tradition. So finally, we get to Arcana Force 14, temperance. I'm telling you, this shit is making me lose my temperance. Anyway, it's our first tribute monster with an OK 2400 body for a level 6. If he has all damage you take is halved, and if tails all damage the opponent takes is halved. I know most of you can immediately conclude this is barely even worth looking at, let alone running, since the cons again highly outweigh the pros of the card, because the damage you take while you have a 2400 attack monster in the field is mostly irrelevant. However, this card is actually a 3 off staple in Arcana Force because some genius actually remembered to give it a secondary effect. During damage calculation in either player's turn, you can discard it to take no damage from that battle. And since you'll most likely be getting your ass handed to you repeatedly while playing this archetype, you might want to stock up on the Temperances as much as possible. Just don't bother summoning them unless it's an emergency. Skipping over the anime only Arcana Force 15, the Devil, oh sorry, the Fiend, as well as the Arcanas of the Tower and the Star, which were again not adapted into cards, we get to number 18, the Moon, our first two tribute monster. For a level 7, it has a pretty damn big 2800 booty, but it might just have the most disproportionate relation between the heads effect and the tails effect. If heads, during your standby phase, you can special summon one moon token, which has zero attack and defense, and if tails, during each of your end phases, select one monster you control and give control of it to your opponent. Hmm, free meaningless token each turn, or give my opponent free shit. I explained why this is bad when I was talking about Chariot, however, the moon is actually pretty interesting in that regard. Since it's the controller of the card who chooses which monster to give, if you hand the moon to your opponent, at the end of their next turn they'll either be forced to give it back to you or hand you one of their monsters. When you think about it, it's kinda like playing ping pong with the moon. In an Arcana Force deck, this card doesn't really do anything significant, but I guess you can make something decently fun out of a card with a permanent she and spy effect. Just make sure you don't get the tokens. Skipping over the unadapted Arcanas of the Sun and the Judgment, we finally get to the last Arcana, 21, Zawardo. This is, in mine and many others' opinion, a pretty good card if you get the Heads effect. It has a 3100 body, which is already beyond massive for a monster you can normal summon, and if you get Heads, during the end phase you can tribute two monsters to skip your opponent's next turn. If Tails, during their draw phase, add the top card of their graveyard to their hand. Needless to say, most things about this card are sweet other than the Tails effect. Until Ptolemaeus came out, this was the only card in the entire game that could actually skip the opponent's turn. True, it has a steep cost, but there are several kinds of tribute engines that can get the world lock going, so when you do it even once, it's gonna be pretty hard for the opponent to come back from the onslaught. So yeah, between the moon and the world, this is the two tribute monster that's actually worth running, even though Arcana Force is not the kind of archetype that makes for easy tribute fodder. 
With the last arcana you'd think we'd be done with the monster lineup, but because every anime villain archetype needs a 4000 beater, or a pair of them in this case, here's Arcana Force X, the Light Ruler and the Dark Ruler. They're both level 10, have 4000 attack and defense, cannot be normal summoned and require tributing 3 monsters you control for their special summon. Let's cover the Light Ruler first. If heads when it destroys a monster by battle, you can add one card from your graveyard to the hand, and if tails, during either player's turn, when this monster is targeted for a spell or trap card effect, it loses 1000 attack and the card which it was targeted by is negated and destroyed. So yeah, both of these are actually decent effects, even though the tails one could definitely do with monster protection as well. Too bad about the summoning condition, since you will rarely ever have 3 arcana monsters on your field. As for the Dark Ruler, if heads, it can attack twice during the battle phase, but if it does, it switches to defense position and cannot be changed until the end of your next turn, and if tails, destroy all cards on the field if this one gets destroyed. I'm an absolute sucker for nuke effects, and getting tails on the Dark Ruler is pretty sweet, not only because of that, but also because the limitation of the heads effect is pretty damn annoying. Funnily enough, you can use these in pretty much any deck that can make 3 monsters on the field easily, However, the massive minus you go into for summoning these is usually not worth it, because in the end all you get are some huge beaters with okay-ish effects dependent on a coin toss. Run only if you really feel like it. Now that all the monsters are out of the way, let's see if the spell and trap support makes the Arcanas any more viable, as in, if it makes them viable at all. Here's the field spell, Light Barrier. During your standby phase, toss a coin, and if it's tails, negate the following effect until your next turn. When you summon an Arcana Force monster, you can choose which coin effect to apply, also each time an Arcana Force monster destroys a monster by battle, you gain life points equal to the destroyed monster's attack. You know what? This is actually pretty good, even though it, again, relies on a coin toss to work. During the turn you activate it, you're guaranteed to be able to choose which Arcana Force effect to apply, so that's already a definite improvement over what we showed before, mostly because flipping heads doesn't strictly have any negative effects. I'd say definitely run this one. Next up is something that's not exactly direct Arcana support, but is a part of the series, so might as well have it in. Cup of Face. Heads draw two cards, Tails opponent draws two cards. I saw Exodia variants running this, and since you're already gambling your victory on pennies, run this if you feel lucky. Punk. And now for the traps, yes, those were indeed all the spells, people. Reversal of Fate, based on the Wheel of Fortune Arcana, lets you treat one Arcana Force monster's effect as the opposite coin toss. Extremely handy, or it would be if it was a quick play spell. This way, you have to hope the monster you want to convert survives the opponent's turn, and then you can finally switch the effect to something that helps you. I'm surprised they didn't slap a coin toss requirement to this one as well. Next up, the card based on the Death Arcana, Tour of Doom. Again, it's in Director kind of for support, but its effect is actually hilarious. During the opponent's standby phase, toss a coin. If heads, they cannot normal or flip summon during that turn, and if tails, you cannot do it during your next turn. It definitely puts you at more risk than it does the opponent, but getting heads is absolutely priceless on this one due to the amount of slowdown it can cause to the opponent, even though, again, it does nothing to directly support the archetype. The final Arcana Force card, thank god, is Arcana Call. Banish one Arcana monster from either player's graveyard and target one Arcana monster you control. During this turn, its effect is treated as the banished monster's one for the same coin toss result. Oh yeah, I get to exchange one mediocre ability for another one. Now this is a staple. Seriously though, I cannot think of too many situations in which this would pay off. Maybe banishing the fool to protect something from targeting? Or uh, halving the battle damage you're about to take by banishing temperance? Meh, it's pretty damn average and painfully slow if you ask me. It could definitely be better and still not broken if it was a continuous trap, in the state it is right now it's barely worth it. Jesus, that felt like forever. Alright, let's get to my favorite part, the 5 category rating. First of all, let's get rid of the easiest one, versatility. This is an archetype entirely dependent on luck, and even if it wasn't, I cannot really think of any relevant decks it could stand up against, be it the GX era or the modern day. So yeah, even if there was no coin tossing involved, even if all the Arcanas had their better effects by default, Arcana Force would still not hope to consistently go victorious against other decks. And why is that? Well, for one, because its power output is absolutely worthless. The monster stats are based on their turret number, leaving most of them at rock bottom when it comes to fighting ability, other than the moon which is not worth running, the world which is more important for its effect rather than the attack, and the EX monsters which are a pain in the ass to summon and make you go into too much minus. When it comes to consistency, I'd usually attribute this to surge power, but Arcana Force have no surge power to speak of. Instead, I guess you could say it's related to the frequency of successful coin toss results, and while Light Barrier and Reversal of Fate definitely help, one of those is Coinbase itself and the other one is just too slow. So consistency is irrelevant as well. Now how about the comeback ability? 
what comeback ability? Arcana Call? Maybe if it also let you copy the stats of the banished monster, but nope, once you start losing advantage, which is very quickly, you might as well just scoop. In terms of protection, uh, the Fool has a nice battle immunity and occasional effect resistance. Temperance helps out with battle damage slightly, one of the EX monsters can sorta of protect itself. There are traces of protection here, but if you want to keep your Arcanas alive, the last thing you should be doing is relying on their own effects for that. So finally, that's a complete no-no for protection. 5 out of 5, it's fucking shit. As for the things that could have been done for the Arcanas to not suck, more of them need secondary effects unrelated to the coin toss, such as Fool's indestructibility or Temperance's damage resistance. There's a reason why these are run in Arcana Force decks in the first place, and that's their utility outside of coin flips. EX monsters don't need to be bad win conditions, but BLS-like monsters instead. Make them relevant to the archetype by making their summoning condition to be something like banishing three Arcana monsters from the graveyard. This, in turn, gives you a comeback chance and keeps the duel exciting for both players. Fill out the rest of the Arcanum, adapt the unused Arcanas from the Tarot as well as the ones from the anime. The Hanged Man was the first Arcana Force monster played in GX and you're just gonna ignore it? Make the spell and trap support more related to the monsters instead of just having them be more coin flip bullshit for the sake of my destiny. Second coin toss in Valhalla, two generic continuous spells are better arcana support cards than the actual arcana support cards. As for the monster coin toss effects, don't make them polar opposites of one another. Instead, have them give two different benefits instead of either helping the user or screwing them up big time. That way you'd not only give more viability to the cards, but also make the duels involving them more fun. I'm gonna go ahead and say I actually love the concept of Arcana Force. They're a great idea for a casual deck because of the uncertainty of coin flips keeps the duels fresh whenever they're about to be performed. I'm a huge fan of cards like Dice Jar, Sand Gambler, Dangerous Machine Type 6 and other such luck-based trash cards made specifically for screwing around. But Arcana Force basically represents Konami forcefully shoving in an archetype that felt like it belonged in the anime and should have stayed in the anime just for the sake of filling up backspace. I'm grateful for cards like The World, but if they wanted to make Arcana Force a thing, they definitely could have tried harder instead of just doing an incomplete copy-paste job of the anime cards. Oh, and if you think I'm being a bit too harsh on this archetype from the GX era, where Konami was still unsure how to introduce the concept of archetypes to the world and we had stuff like roids and the weird cyber dragon support, let me just point out that Arcana Force came out in the same set as Light Swarns. That's right, these things crawled out of Light of Destruction after we had things like Volcanics, Gladiator Beast and Six Samurai. So yeah, they have no excuses for this one. Ladies, gentlemen, and beings of pure destiny, thank you for watching this absurdly long analysis of an ancient useless bunch of cards by Rank 10 Yu-Gi-Oh! And do remember to subscribe. See you next time.